Hello and welcome to Everybody Pulls the Tarp. I'm your host, Andrew Moses. With me today, a very, very special guest, Arturo Elizondo, the co-founder and CEO of Clara Foods. Arturo is a Forbes 30 under 30 honoree, and he is reimagining the way uh, the world produces its proteins. Arturo, welcome to the show. Thank you, Andrew. Thanks for having me. Really excited. I'm really excited to have you, Arturo, and and I, I'm so fascinated with with what you're doing at Clara Foods, and want to dig dig into it all. So let's go let's go way back. So you're 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 raised in Texas, you know. So you're sitting there in Texas. When did you when did you decide that you want to change the way the world uh, gets its protein? <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, yeah, it's a uh, it, it's a little bit of a crazy story. But I you know I grew up in Texas, and I'm Mexican by heritage. So animal protein was like such a huge part of my upbringing and my culture and my life. And, you know, a meal wasn't a meal unless there was a big old steak or eggs or something in the, um, at the center of the plate. And so like any good Texan, I had my barbecue every Sunday and like any good Mexican, I had my two extra breakfasts every single morning. And I never thought about where my food came from until I... I, I began interning at the USDA in the in the sub agency that regulates all the slaughterhouses, and I really wanted to pursue a career in government because I I, I wanted to make an impact in some shape or form. I felt that in government, um, at least at the time this was ten years ago, um, I I really felt inspired to um, to to use the public sector to to help make make a positive change, and while I was at the USDA, I. I just, my mind was blown in terms of how massive the animal protein production complex really was. Like I had no idea that we slaughtered over a million animals every single hour in the U.S. alone. Like it was, it was just mind blowing. Um, and, it, and and purely, you know, at, at this point, mainly to satiate our palates, right? I think people we're, we're we're consuming these products because. They're delicious, and they're uh, they're they're essentially entrenched in our in our lives in a really in a really deep way, um, and so I you know I, I I just I saw how incredibly massive this um, this this production process was, and and, and just ultimately how um, how difficult it was to 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 really um, make it ethical and sustainable and you know all the problems endemic in factory farming and it was really for the first time i was confronted with my plate uh and like what and, and and understanding how the food that i was eating every single day three times at least three times a day um was being made so this show is called everybody pulls the tarp and it's based upon a philosophy that i have that great teams and great organizations are powered by individuals who contribute in unexpected ways well beyond their their job description. And I think what's interesting in your case, Arturo, is that there was no job description for what you wanted to do, right? You, you wanted to completely reimagine the way that something is done. So what was your first step in beginning that, that journey when you said, I wanna do something? Yeah, well, I think for, for me, so I had, I was like incredibly set on like following this, this government career track. I was like, I had interned for my congressman. I was at the USDA. I had interned at the White House. I went to Harvard and I studied government. You know, I, I was like trying to get on the fast track for like going into public service and like doing the best I could there. And in, it, it, in some ways, like the more that I learned about the food system and, and it was this overall, you know, kind of longer path for me. Like I, 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 I didn't want to stop eating burgers. You know, I didn't want to stop eating my eggs for breakfast. Like I didn't want to be doing these things. And, and so the, the more kind of self um, work that I did, the more I realized like, Hey, this is a lifestyle that I want to like that, uh, that, that, that I want to, to, to live out more. Um, and that I, 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 I want to eat where I feel like my values are aligned. Um, and that when I'm eating, I'm contributing to something as opposed to being, you know, as opposed to, um, as opposed to having a, you know, having a negative impact. And, and so I had completely changed my diet and I realized how hard it was. And I, there was a part of me that, that, that wanted to make a difference, but I didn't know in what way. And I, I had all of these, you know, I was talking to all of these people because I, I thought someone had the answer. You know, someone was going to tell me, hey, you need to go to San Francisco and I start this company because no one else is going to. 
Um, and, and, and that wasn't really going to happen unless I actually voiced it myself. And there were people who, who told me this, but I didn't, I never made, I didn't take the step, um, because of that. It, um, as, as much as I realized, look, I, I, as I was interviewing for all these different jobs, I was right after, right out of, you know, uh, right out of college. I, um, I was looking, I was interviewing and, I, and like, I, I could tell like my heart wasn't in it. You know, like I, 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 there was something about it where I felt like I was going through the motions. Everyone else was super excited about the jobs that they were getting in school. And I was like, I know that if I take this job as this financial analyst or as this, you know, political appointee um, in the federal government or um, as, you know, working for a big tech company, I knew I wasn't going to be the best. And it wasn't because I didn't have the skills, but I knew that I could only really get motivated by something and get my 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 butt out of bed every day if I was working for something that that truly resonated with my values. And that's when I, like, once I made that realization, like, oh my god, like I I know I'm not going to be great at these at these other jobs because my my heart really wasn't in it. And I decided, you know what, I I. I, I need to be part of the food tech ecosystem in some shape or form. And I had a phone call with one of my mentors who honestly believed in me more than, more than I've, more than I believed in myself at the time. And he was like, you can do this. Like, and, and for me, founding a company was so like, it, it was like a, like a world apart. Um, I, I, I was taught to like draw with, you know, you know, color um, inside the box, right. And in, right. the lines and 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 i hadn't done i i'd always played it safe and this was like a moment of reckoning for me and but after that phone call i was like you're 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 right um and so i i i um at that time i booked a one-way ticket to san francisco and i had no job i had no place to stay but i knew that i wanted to be where where food was being reimagined and i was I was like, look, I'm going to give it a few months and try it out. So, so that classic entrepreneurial story, that one-way ticket to San Francisco. <laughs> so you start Clara Foods. So, so yeah. for, for my audience, explain yeah. in a minute or so what what, what 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 are you doing at Clara Foods? Really, really interesting. Yeah. So um, we're a B2B company. Our goal is to be in, to be essentially the intel inside for food. How do we how do we upgrade all the foods that people know and love with ingredients and particularly proteins that that are sustainable but incredibly functional and, and have the taste and the texture that we as people know and love. And so how do we start revamping the back end of food production? And the way that we do that is by making real animal protein without using a single animal. And as crazy as it sounds, this technology has been around for 40 years. So, uh, and I can go more in depth on it at, at some other point. Um, but at its most basic level, we brew proteins. So, in the same way that brewers use yeast to convert sugar into alcohol to make beer and wine, the yeast that we work with naturally converts sugar into protein. And so, then we can actually design the yeast to make to make specific kinds of of, of proteins. Um, like we can hack it essentially, like a computer. Um, and, 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 and we insert code like DNA, um, but instead of zeros and ones, it's A, T, C, and G. And we can essentially program the yeast to make different kinds of proteins. And we, we, um, are starting with working, um, on egg proteins because they're super functional and, and super, and, and really high quality proteins. And is there, and we thought, look, is there a way that instead of using 600 gallons of water to make a dozen eggs that people buy every single, you know, almost every single week. Can we do it for with a fraction of the resources required to produce it? it Take six hundred gallons of water to produce a dozen eggs. Yeah. Wow. So, so, so that that I, it, you're completely reimagining re- reimagining how we uh, how we produce the food, but it it probably didn't just happen like that, right? People see these entrepreneurial stories and they see these these startups emerge. And they think that it just happens overnight. I know that you've done tremendous amounts of research and you immersed yourself in this subject matter and in this industry. Maybe talk a minute about that and what that process was like of, of really developing the, uh, the, the, the product and the process. Yeah, absolutely. And I, um, I, 
I can take credit for this. We have an incredible group of scientists, team of scientists who are trying to push the frontier of science um, at the company who get inspired by to, to, to do that work day in and day out. Um, and I've uh, and I had it, it initially, you know, my co-founder was is a microbiologist by training. So um, in terms of the, the work that's got in, we've we've pumped probably like 40 plus million dollars into into this technology over the last five, uh, five and a half years, you know, it's run like building a, like be, building a biotech company, particularly like using, um, biology to develop, you know, next generation products is incredibly time intensive. It's, it's basically bringing a drug to market, like with pharma companies, but we're doing it for food. Um, and, and, and so it's an incredibly intensive process and it really is a marathon. Um, where you, know, you kind of have to go in and day out, uh, day in day out. Um, you know, we don't. Uh, it takes a long time to get revenue. It takes a long time to get validation from customers from pro uh, for products. And I wasn't a scientist coming into this, and so my I for the first several months, I literally sat on like right by right by my co-founder's bench as he was like you know pipetting and 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 doing his. Uh, um, doing his work, I was sitting in the lab to like really, really understand that technology. And then I, I, I started, you know, uh, just Googling and, um, and just getting, you know, trying to get as smart as I could about the, uh, about the technology, the space. Um, and I think just overall being, getting a crash course in the very beginning to sort of get to start getting up to speed and then ultimately being able being open to asking the dumb questions, which for me was also um, uncomfortable because I, um, I had a tendency to like want to, um, to be prepared, right. To, to be, to be really smart, to be thoughtful. And, and I would ask, you know, and then I, I would go in and ask, well, how do you do this? Or why is that? Um, and really, you know, really, really basic questions. What is that? You know, what is that piece of machine that, 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 that we're using the centrifuge I had never seen before. Um, so, um, so there was also that, that reckoning of being humble, um, uh, and being, being open to, um, to not, uh, you know, being open to, to being proven wrong and to, um, to being taught. Um, and, and, and I think that that was really helpful. It's 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 really impressive, Arturo, because I think one of the things that I've I've observed lately in the world, right, is that information is always available at our fingertips these days, and people want such like rapid uh, ingestion of information, right? Yeah. People they they want to they want an answer to something, they want to understand a subject matter, and usually they can just find it on their phone or yeah. you know get, pull it up on Google really quickly. But to truly drive like real impact, like you're doing. And to append an entire industry, it requires really immersive research and thought. And uh, it's it's kudos to you for being, you know, open open minded to that and humble enough to to, to go along that 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 journey. But one subject I want to hit on there: you mentioned the team, you mentioned a co-founder, mm -hmm. you mentioned a team of folks around you. When you're building something like this, how do you go about identifying the right folks to surround yourself with? Yeah, it's a question that I still ask myself. Uh, I think hiring is something that I've made a ton of mistakes on, and I've also gotten it so, and I've, I, I, and also been very proud that we've been made some incredible hires. But it's a learning process, and I think a lot of it is is ha, has been for me learning to trust my gut. Um, but what I think the the thing that unites most people, most of like the rock stars at Clara, are just like the people who. Um, a who come to us, or who are just like uh, like really stubborn. Like I I I I've told people like you know what it's not really the right fit, and they just kind of keep like keep pushing and like keep trying to to prove us wrong. Um, and 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 you know and, and that persistence has just been amazing. But there's what what's always there for what what has been the common thread in terms of the the best people at the company are those who who like really um who feel incredibly strongly about what we're doing and it's not about like they have to be like hardcore vegans right like who want to change like the the who who want to um who who um, who want to bring these products to market because they're, you know, because they're vegan or because their families are vegan or because they're huge, like environmentalists or because they're, um, um, because of the mission of the company. I think that that's, that, that is true for a lot of people. Um, 
at the company. There, it's also like one of our, some of our best scientists are those who really think about how do we, who just are so obsessed with like pushing the frontier of science, like doing, doing work that has never been done before, doing experiments in a way that, 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 that had never really been thought of and just like, and either really like resonate with the, with the mission or really resonate with the work that they're doing, uh, but that they're there, that no one, um, the ones who are not lukewarm, if that makes sense. There is a fire you- about something at the company. Do, do you think that that's something that people are just hardwired with or can people learn to be that passionate and immersed in, you know, like you say, pushing the frontier of science? Is that just something you, you either have or you or you don't have? And it's just a matter of identifying people who have that? Um, yeah, it, 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 it's a great question. My, I mean, I, I, I'm biased because I think I think you can teach yourself anything. I think we as humans are basically are, are like computers as well. We can program ourselves to do things, to get excited about things, to to push ourselves when we, when, when we don't want to and to discover passions that um, that we didn't even know we had. And and you know, I, I my sense is that it can be it's something it can be something to, to be developed. I mean, for a lot of people it's it's something that that's inherent. Um, and I think I, I, that's something that was true for me, but I've never been on fire about something as much as with food. Like I know I will never leave the food industry as like in my entire life. And whether it's Clara or something else, I know like this is why I was put on this earth to do. And I have that kind of clarity. Um, and I know a lot of, a lot of people who, who, who don't. And I think a, a part of it is, is discovering. I think we all want to find our purpose. And so I do think that it's something that 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 over time, um, depending on the different lived experiences of the people, like they'll discover this. And what, one of our amazing science, our first scientist, Doug, you know, he w- uh, he was actually connected to us by um, by one of our investors. And I think ultimately, to 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 your question about how do we get the how do we get really great people, is oftentimes the people come to us and they find us, or you know, and through our network, you know, there we have this really amazing person, um, you know, that 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 is about to leave this company, like you know, they should talk to you guys. And so like, there's been that, that kind of inbound interest that, that, that I'm, that I'm really excited about. Um, that, that's been really, really helpful. Um, but, but that, that, that first scientist, his name's Doug. Um, and he, like, he'll tell you his life story. It's incredible, but he like, just was like a trouble, like, just like, a um, a rebel growing up and just, you know, like wasn't super turned on by, by school and, uh, and, 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 uh, he was having a hard time. And then he, you know, went into science and like really hit his stride. And tonight, you know, that, that like now at Clara, he, you know, he, he goes home and like reads papers on like, what's the latest research saying? Like, what's the latest, what, what, what are the newest experiments coming? You know, uh, what, what, what's coming in the future? And there's this real fire about him that, 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 that I love. And, um, and, and that I've seen, you know, where he was before and where he is now is, is, is very different. And so I, I, my sense is that it is something that, that gets developed. So take us behind the scenes a little bit into life as a, a CEO of a food tech startup. Everybody thinks that the life as a CEO of a startup is is glamorous and and uh, you know all uh, spending time with investors and, and and giving you know big speeches and Forbes under uh, Forbes thirty under thirty honors, but but I know it is it is not you know all uh, all uh, glamorous. So so you know, give me an example or two of some things that that maybe people would be surprised that Arturo Elizondo does on a daily basis or regular basis to keep things going. Um. In terms of like the, the grind, like not sure, the sure. Thing. Um, yeah, it's. <laughs> I mean, I think at the for the most part, um, one thing that that I've learned is to like have a gut of steel, um, like because it's a roller coaster. Like every like almost on a regular basis, I like on any like on any given day, I will like have like some of the highest highs where it's like, Oh my God, we're going to like change the world. And like something happens in the lab or something happens with a, with one of our partners or, or investors. We're like, Oh my God, like we're like, this is a rocket. So we're going to, you know, we're, we're taking off. And then the, the, you know, a minute later, you know, we, we, we get these, um, you know, I experienced my, some of my lowest lows and it's that, that, that roller coaster of a ride that is, is, um, is, 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 is really tough. And I think, 
so that that for me would be um would would be the you know in some ways some of the, like the, the best parts of the job that you really feel you know that there's this incredible high but then also this pit in your stomach when like something is not going well at the company um and i think for so for me in terms of my day-to-day -day, it really honestly the, the the biggest part is is um I spend most of my my days in meetings with my team and I've learned to transition from an individual contributor as amazing as I think I am and as effective and as efficient as I think I am like it, it you know you max out um, and I maxed out where I was like I'm not I'm not as helpful to the company as like trying to do trying to, to push this project forward I'm much more effective actually supporting a team to get you know to 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 really drive um, drive the impact of the company, and so then I, I I've now been transitioning to being more of a coach than uh, than the quarterback, um, and really driving the play and and, and and more than anything you know helping enable um, and, and really you know lift our 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 leadership team. So how do you go about doing that, right? Because a lot of a lot of times I'm I'm yeah. sure. CEO is sitting in a meeting, the co you're the co-founder, you're sitting in a meeting and the team just is going to look to you for the answer. Arturo, what's the answer? Give us the answer. How mm -hmm. do you keep that team, like as you say, you, you, you coach them yeah. through and end up enabling an outcome that's better than something you could have come up your, come up with yourself? Yeah, I mean, I, I, honestly, it was, I mean, A, it's a huge trial, like, trial and error, right? Also, like knowing that like literally knowing that I can't be doing it myself anymore. Um, like there was this like moment of reckoning where I'm like, I just don't have enough time in the day. Like I just, I, I this guy's super smart or, you know, that, that, that this other person is really great. Like, you know, it, like, you know, really realizing it. And then I think ultimately like being intentional about it. Like sometimes I will um, just not talk at a meeting. And kind of like let them figure it out, you know, and and it's so tempting to be like, at least for, for me, it's so tempting for me to be like, oh, this is what we need to do. And and I, you know, I have I have a coach that I work with as well. And one of what um, some of his advice has been, you know, just let them like let them come to you, uh, like resist the urge to always have the answer, because if you keep having the answer, everyone is going to continue looking to you. And so there is this, again, like the, 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 this element of wanting to be, um, wanting to like, wanting to, to meaningfully transition. And if I want the best for, for the company, I know that that's, that's really where I, 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 I can, I, I can be most helpful is, is to start, you know, making honestly that like, Focusing on the things that, that 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 where I am uniquely able to add value to the company, which is now going to be transitioning more towards, you know, elevating Clara's public profile now that we're launching our first several products, um, and so having people at the company that I really trust, and part of the way to build that trust is by 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 letting them impress you, um, and, and and like giving them the opportunity, feeling them make, making them feel empowered to make decisions to mess up. Um, knowing that 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 you're there when they need you, um, but not, but really, you know, allowing them to to walk and thrive on their own, and it's and it's really hard, I, especially for it has been for me. And you have to be intentional about it, as you said. Yeah, which is really important. Let's let's uh, before I let you go, I want to I want to know wh where is the future of Clara Food? So in in our in, in your vision, will there come a day when you know I I don't eat any animal protein or or does the consumer have a choice? Yeah, it's it's such a great question, and I think that that's um, it's so seductive to say like it's going to be this. And I, I don't pretend to know the future, but what I can say is that with the way that with the way that technology is progressing, the way that consumers are are, are behaving, um, and the the way that the world needs us to change, I think if we if we want to have a fighting shot at at living in a world that is habitable, we need to fundamentally transform the way that we eat. There's just not enough land or water on the planet to satiate the kind of demand that we have. Because it's not just Americans. Like if the rest of the world begins eating the way that we do, it is disastrous. Um, 
again, like with, with, the, with the eggs and, and with all these examples, how much water and land and energy, not to mention the, all the collateral damage that happens, um, the environment, like the, 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 the runoff. I mean, like there's a million documentaries about, about the impact of our food, of our, of, of rearing animals for, for protein. Um, and so the, at least in a factory farm setting, again, like that, that, and that's really what we're after is replacing the, you know, really, really providing an alternative to the factory farming model. Um, and so the way that I see it is, I think the, the way, um, so in the, in, the, in the grocery store of the future, you will have right now where you go to the meat section and it's like meat, 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 meat everywhere or in the egg section, you'll have all these different eggs or in, in, in the cheese section, um, they'll start looking more like how the dairy section looks today. Um, and I think that you'll start seeing more and more of these alternatives, right? So when you go to get your milk, now it's no, you know, it used to be just like milk, like throughout, and then like maybe one skew, one, you know, one brand that was making soy milk. And right. that was it. You look, you go to the grocery store today and you see almond milk, hemp milk, uh, soy milk, um, oat milk, hemp milk rice milk, you know, every coconut milk, everything under the sun. And now it's, it's actually a pretty sizable part of the, um, of, of the milks uh, of the dairy section. But I, and I see that just being like now the, like that the majority of products will be all these different options for people and that animal products will be reserved more for the, you know, more sort of like the free range, you know, grass fed beef or these like more, um, you know, these, uh, these higher quality products from the animal Part, and that the factory farming alternatives will now be actually much more plant-based, much more alternative, and much more sustainable. Arturo, well, this has been an absolute pleasure. You know, the work you're doing is, is so inspirational. Uh, I can't wait to see where Clara Foods goes and where you take this. I will uh, surely be following along. Thank you for joining Everybody Pulls the Tarp today. Yeah, Andrew, thank you so much for having me and for, for being able to share our story. Really, really appreciate it. Thanks for, thanks for the opportunity. You got it, Arturo. Take care. Bye.